Hello, Curran here. We've made it all the way through our data visualization course. And uh, to me, the time just flew by, but I had a great time teaching it, and I hope you got a lot out of it. It was really nice to see your final project videos, and it was also really nice to see all these blocks get created on blocks.org. So Block Builder has a search feature, and by default, if you don't put anything in for a search term, it shows you the latest blocks that got produced. And during the course, I noticed that the students in this course sort of flooded this page. So many new blocks were created. So as this last video, I would like to do sort of a retrospective in terms of which blocks were sort of some of my favorites and um, got me the most excited. This one is really nice, really novel. There's novelty here. The idea of encoding time as X, but, um, you know, latitude or longitude, I always get them confused, as Y, that's really cool. So you can see some interesting patterns here, and it's just visually interesting because there's a variety of large and small things. Really nice. This one is beautiful. There's a variety of channels being used here, and I just think that's so cool. And also the zooming is really fluid with the updating axes. That's really nice. This one struck me as really cool too because you can so clearly see that there's two clusters of male and female voices. This one I found really interesting to study and consider what it means. This shows the number of nuclear bomb tests by different countries throughout history. And I find it so interesting that back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, there were so many more tests of nuclear weapons by the United States and uh, USSR than there are today. And it sort of dropped off, looks like, uh, around 1993. And I wonder what it would look like if you put North Korea 2016-2017 on this chart. This one I was so happy to see because I, you know, we had iterated a little bit on this and I had suggested to try D3 Contour and D3 Contour works. It works really well. And especially this interaction, if you drag the slider, it changes, the contours change. This turned out really nice and especially in the final project. This one's really nice too. I saw it and I'm like, oh man, that's so cool. Cherry blossom, flowering, history. And I saw recently someone, some company made almost the same visualization. I, it, it was making the rounds on Twitter and I thought, hey, you know, my student did this first. <laughs> this one struck me as pretty interesting. And, and this was a result of some discussions early on in the course about, you know, oh, women in tech would be a really good topic to uh, make some visualizations about. And so isn't it interesting here that women got a lot more bachelor's degrees in like the 80s in computer science and then there was a spike in master's degrees around the, you know, 2000. Pretty interesting. Here's an iteration of that visualization using size as well. And this is sort of the spirit of data visualization. You know, get something working and then iterate on it and try different things. This one I think was originally visualized differently and I had suggested why not try the stream graph approach. So Scott tried it as a stream graph and this is what it looks like. Pretty interesting. Global carbon emissions by type over time. But then he iterated on it and said actually this is a little bit more readable and then you can also read the total more clearly and that's a good point. When I saw this one I laughed out loud and I said oh man this is so perfect so perfect you know you can do the motion like this in software and it doesn't come through off the page in the textbook. This really captures what I was after you know converting the ideas from the book into reality. This is a nice one too. Happiness ranking versus GDP per capita. 
I really like the black and white aesthetic of this one and how the circles, you know, sort of flow like that. Really nice. It reminds me of that thought, you know, get it right in black and white. This one is interesting too, the arrivals of tourists in different places. And this to me is interesting and highlights um, the data is very sparse until, you know, between 1980 and 2010. And the crossings I find interesting. It looks like around 2003 here, Asia and Pacific region overtakes the Americas in terms of tourism. And it looks like around 2005, the Middle East sort of overtakes Africa. This is a good one. Median earnings by major. I was really surprised to see that people who major in petroleum engineering make, what's that, uh, 110K? The labels are a bit off. But that's a lot more than all the others. You know, why is that? And here's computer engineering. I would have thought that would be higher, but it's not. Interesting. This is a good one. The top mega cities. Really interesting to me that Tokyo and Jakarta are massive, massive compared to pretty much most other mega cities. And also, this is color coded by continent, I believe. And you can see that most of the world's mega cities are in Asia. Global land temperature over time. This is showing a slight increase over time of the global land temperature. But what I thought sort of stands out a little bit more than that is that back in time, there's a lot more variation in the measurements. And why is that? I would guess it's because thermometers were less accurate or they were more noisy. I don't know. Here's another nice visualization that shows two clear clusters. And it pretty much tells you that using these two metrics, the texture mean and the radius mean, you could probably train a, you know, a machine learning model pretty accurately to distinguish between malignant and benign tumors. This was cool to see too, a word cloud. The word cloud of movie plot keywords. Pretty cool, love, murder, and death. And police, <laughs> that pretty much sums up all movies, right? This scatter plot about comets was iterated on to use color effectively, and I really like that. The scatter plot matrix of the same data is pretty cool too. It sort of fills up the screen with data. I was so happy to see this one. You know, this shows some courage to try to venture off into uncharted territory. You know, how do you add labels on a map? This is one of the more difficult problems with visualization in general, but I would really encourage this sort of thing. You know, if you have an idea, try it. Even though it didn't completely work out, you know, it, sh it shows that the problem is hard, but it's probably doable too with a little bit more effort. So this is really cool, sort of pushing the boundaries of what's possible. This one I thought was sort of funny to study and read. It shows match percentage by field with speed dating. So I guess this means that people in medical science pair well with other people in medical science. And that's like a million times more so than people who are undecided, who don't know their major <laughs> or in math. <laughs> math majors don't go well with other math majors, apparently. This one's really cool. It's basically a recreation of one of the Gapminder visualizations based on one of my uh, scatterplot templates. That was really cool to see. I really love the styling on this one. You know, the theme is nuclear energy. And I love the background image there with the nuclear energy symbol. And it's interesting to read as well. I mean, who knew that France has the largest percentage of its electricity produced from nuclear sources? This one is a nice sort of a fusion between a scatter plot and a line chart. This visualization of internet users by region over time, I thought was really interesting just to read it. Uh, it. It shows sort of North America sort of almost peaked around like 2000 or so. And then East Asia and Pacific is really skyrocketing compared to the rest of the world. 
And I thought it was so cool that I actually converted it into a line chart. And here's what that line chart looks like. You can see here's North America. It looks like North America saturated with internet users around, I don't know, 2005. But East Asia and Pacific is just growing and growing and growing. Like, I think that's pretty interesting. That's my recap of some of the blocks that you all have created during this course. And, you know, it's just thrilling to me that in this course, we were able to actually contribute a bunch of brand new data visualizations that never before existed. I'd like to also highlight some of the student projects, the final projects that blew my mind. This project on world population data was finished pretty early and then really refined nicely. You can see how the population on the map and in the population pyramid varies over time. This project about missing migrants is very nice as well. You can brush in the stream graph to navigate over time. With this nice interactive legend, you can see that most of the deaths occurred due to drowning. This project is about the fastest growing companies. It's a really nice map. I love the colors here and the legend is so good. And you can drag to see how things changed over time. There's a couple more widgets where you can select an index and also change the field. This project is about basketball. Really nice blend of density estimation with contour plots and showing the raw data points. This project is about community running. Really nice calendar view, plus this interaction filtering by driving time. This project is about earthquakes. Really beautiful animations, and you can see where the earthquakes occurred over time. This project is about bike share data. It's got a really nice mix of radial charts, scatter plots, and a line chart with brushing with these linked views here. Really beautiful work. I also want to thank you all for your honest feedback about the course. Overall, I'm really happy with how the course turned out, but there were a couple rough aspects like having everyone use GitHub and GitHub pages. Maybe that was a little bit too much. Um, so I sort of feel bad like, oh, maybe I should have stuck to block side of work for the whole course. Also, I realized that people who don't have any programming background, it's nearly impossible to go from that to creating interactive linked views with JavaScript in one course. That's a bit of a stretch. So I didn't really realize that going in, but you know, I, I feel like I learned a lot about how to teach by doing this course. So thank you all for participating. I had a great time. I hope you did too. And um, I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss you guys. Wishing you all the best in your careers.